Next up, we're very privileged to have Je Jeff Atwood, um, technical evangelist, legend behind Coding Horror and Stack Overflow. He's also an expert in backups and wumpuses. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so I'm here today to talk about Stack Overflow, mostly. Uh, uh, thank you for having me in New Zealand. This is my first time really traveling this far internationally past the international dateline. I'm still fascinated that I'm actually in the future, you know? When I talk to my team, I'm like, you guys are still on yesterday. You know, I'm so beyond yesterday. So that's, that's fun, and it's, it's beautiful here, so thank you for that. Uh, I live in uh, California in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's a great place for software developers to live. It's kind of like Mecca. And uh, Coding Horror is my blog. A lot of people know me from my blog, Coding Horror. And then, of course, we're going to talk quite a bit about Stack Overflow in this presentation. That's the other main thing that I do at the moment. Uh, my, part, my business partner, Joel Spolsky, who I was very fortunate to hook up with, one of my heroes, uh, thinks of himself as a New Zealander. I just want to make sure you're aware of that. It's, it's not a problem. <laughs> but uh, Joel was very excited that I was going to New Zealand and he had all this advice. And, things I should do and places I should go. So uh, I just want to put in a plug there for Joel. Uh, he likes New Zealand so much that their primary product, the mascot, is the Kiwi, right? So you know, it, it is a bug tracking software. So it makes sense, I guess. But he's a little obsessed. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, so in building Stack Overflow, when I, when I sort of teamed up with Joel, uh, the first thing we thought about was we're building something for ourselves. We're programmers, we're software developers, and we think there's a better way to get answers to programming questions on the internet. And one of the reasons we thought we could do this was because we feel like we know our audience. <laughs> and so, and, and I, I count myself as one of these people, too. So you know, I, I say this only partially tongue in cheek, is, is, is we sort of know how our minds work and the things that we're interested in, and so on and so forth. And you know, geeks can be sexy. You know, programmers can be sexy. <laughs> Just because you know, you're a programmer doesn't mean you can't be sexy. Or you know, maybe this is more your speed. You know, that's totally cool. I don't, I don't judge. You know, it's all programming to me, whether you're on you know, Mac or Windows. It's, it's all good. And in all seriousness, that was one of the things we wanted to attack with Stack Overflow was that programmers spent so much time fighting with each other. I mean, this is just a people thing, not a programmer thing, but you know, sunny side up versus you know, uh, scrambled and you know, there's been holy wars fought over this stuff. And it's all just programming. We're all just doing the same thing. And that was one of the core, the core lessons that we wanted to instill in Stack Overflow was that we're doing this thing together. So one of my favorite jokes about computer programmers is how do you tell an introverted computer programmer from an extroverted computer programmer? And it's really quite simple. The extroverted programmer looks at your shoes when he's talking to you. <laughs> yeah. So I say this with great tenderness. I mean, I really do love my fellow programmers. I mean, we have a shared passion for building stuff. And you know, I'm not going to apologize to anybody about that. Building stuff is awesome. Um, it's just a question of sort of how you do it. Now, one thing I want to point out is that historically, programming has not been a social activity. Programming was between you and the machine. And this is a great quote from M Michael Morcati, which is uh, the only place I've been able to find it is in Code Complete. Uh, but it's a great quote. It's one of my favorite quotes about software development. And it essentially says that when you write code, you're writing a love letter to the computer, that you love the computer and the computer loves you. And it's full of these intimate details about how the program works, how the computer works, how the APIs work, that only two lovers would know. You know, it's the secret language that you have between you and the computer, and it's this special private thing. You know, and you love it. And even Knuth uh, had this dedication in his book. I mean, this is probably the, the most famous living uh, programmer. And he dedicated these books, these really super famous books, not to his wife, not to his child. <laughs> they were dedicated to the computer that he loved and spent so much time working with. Uh, so it's a really common feeling for, for programmers to have, uh, is that you know, I'm working with this thing that I love. Uh, but something happened. So 
I think I am not quite old enough, or young enough rather, for this to have been changed. But when I started programming, it really was you in a room with a personal computer. I mean, you might know other people that had, say, an Apple II or Commodore 64, and you were friends with them. But there wasn't really this online community. There wasn't really the strong sense of connection to other programmers and other code. Um, and Danny Berry is, is a really famous uh, software developer in, in the game industry. And one of uh, her favorite quotes was, no one said on their deathbed, gee, I wish I had spent more time with my computer. And I found this sort of ironic, because if you look at what Danny Berry created, uh, first of all, Mule, which is famous because it was a multiplayer game. Right? So you're playing with friends. You know, it, playing Mule by yourself is really not that fun. It's all about playing with other people. So even having said this, uh, Danny's work, uh, and also Modem Wars, which is another, you know, this predates the internet as well, you're, the idea of playing a video game with another person used to be this revolutionary thing. You know, I'm playing with another person that's not in the room was like revelatory. I remember my first game of Doom, I was playing on like the Duango, the, it was like the Texas Doom wide area gaming network. I was like, I can't believe these are actually other people I'm shooting with my shotgun. <laughs> Not for real, of course, but just for fun. Uh, that was amazing. You know, that was a new thing. And I think we take that for granted now. But th that programming is now a social activity. Like it or not, programming is a social activity. So when we built Stack Overflow, we're building social software for people who are effectively kind of antisocial. You know, they didn't self-select into being, uh, you know, captain of, you know, the rugby team. They self-selected into sitting in a room with a computer, and that's their idea of a good time. And again, in their defense, this is still my idea of a good time. I, I love nothing more than on Friday night sitting down and working on the Stack Overflow code. That, to me, is, is wonderful. So I, I will totally defend it. Uh, and Stack Overflow, of course, is a Q&A system for programmers. It's a way of getting answers to your programming questions uh, and, and hopefully disseminating that information through web search engines to other programmers who have the same questions that you have. And when building this, Joel and I really looked at all the things online, all the community things. We had all done community. I had done community through my blog, which had become like phenomenally large, completely accidentally. Joel had discussion forums. So we had a lot of thoughts about how to build a next generation sort of Q&A system while pulling in all the best elements of all the stuff that we used that we liked and worked. So as you can see in this little pie chart here, there's a lot of influences that we pulled into Stack Overflow. I'm, I'm going to walk you through uh, some of those. So I'm going to start with just, this is just a question on Stack Overflow. This is actually literally a random question I picked this morning. Um, and it's also interesting because you'll notice it got answered in 10 minutes. <laughs> which is quite good. I mean, at random I pick this and it has two really good answers within 10 minutes. And that was the goal. You know, you have a question, put it on Stack Overflow and pretty rapidly your peers will tell you, hopefully, or at least point you in the right direction what your answer is. So I've removed a lot of elements from the page. And the classic model of discussion or really Q&A on the internet is the PHP BB model where you have stuff that starts at the top and then stuff that goes under that, and stuff that goes under that, and stuff that goes under that. But there's a lot of problems with this model. Uh, and one of the first is that it's in chronological order. What if the best answer is two days later? Then you have to scroll through you know, two days worth of noise to get to the best answer. So one of the first things we added, and I'll cycle back and forth so you can sort of see what I'm doing here, um, is voting. Now, voting is not a new thing. I mean, if, you, if you've been to Dig, you've been to Reddit, and you know, Kevin Rose is speaking, I think, tomorrow. So. You guys know Dig. Uh, voting really works. I mean, it's amazing, actually, how well it works. There's some tweaks you have to do to the system to make it work really well, but in general, it's, it's, it's astonishing how well this works. So all the good information goes to the top because people vote for it, e.g., your peers, other programmers vote for it and make it go to the top. Uh, there's also this social convention, the little green check mark that you see. That's a social convention between the person who asked the question here and what he thought was the best answer for him or her. You know, this was what I thought was the best answer. The community can actually disagree with this. And in fact, you'll note here the, the answer underneath has one vote, whereas the accepted answer has zero votes. That's actually normal. And I can't show it here, but it was interesting because this question had a number of answers that were voted way down, like negative three, negative four, which is a little bit unusual. But it was the community expressing displeasure with some of the answers and pushing them down so that they wouldn't uh, cause a problem. For you, random programmer who finds this, you're going to find the good stuff at the top and the bad stuff, you, you don't have to see. It's at the bottom. 
So the next thing we're gonna add is editing. So I'm gonna cycle back forth here a few times so you can sort of see the pattern. Uh, we do take some elements of Wikipedia in that anything in our system can be edited, but there is a caveat around that. It can only be edited if we trust you. The system learns to trust you because other programmers vouch for you by voting for you. If, another, if enough programmers vote for you, you then have the right to edit anything, and I mean literally anything in the system. Uh, and it'll be tracked. We have a revision tracking history that goes on here. Uh, and anytime you have editing, you have meta commentary that goes with the editing. Like, I think you should improve this. I think you missed something here. And you can see there's actually a little comment here, thanks for the th thorough explanation. So anytime there's editing, you also need a little bit of meta discussion around the editing, which is why we have the commenting system where you can annotate a post and highlight some aspect of it. There's also flagging. If you don't like something that's posted, this is something we got from Craigslist, which uses flagging ex extensively. If something evil is posted, if something so incorrect is posted that it's actually harmful or just you know, run-of-the-mill spam, you would actually flag it by clicking the little flag link that you see on the left there. So you can see we're folding in these different elements from these different systems and combining them all together. The next thing we add, and let me just cycle so you can sort of see it res in a little bit, is a tagging system. This is inspired a little bit from blogging, a little bit from Delicious, where every question that comes in, we invite you to tag it with whatever categories are appropriate for that question. You know, it could be the language, it could be the approach, it could be the, you know, the API that you're using. Uh, it could be some other completely obscure aspect of the question. This is user-generated tagging. So once we do this, we can bring in, as you can see on the right there, the related questions. So we can relate things together now through the tagging system and group like questions together. This is really helpful in finding duplicates. So the next phase, this is subtle, but really important actually. I'm just gonna cycle through. So you can see there's a reputation system that I've alluded to. Uh, as you use the system and people vote for your, your questions and your answers, you gain reputation in our system, which will unlock certain abilities. Um, but the interesting thing here is, is for me is that you're learning that this is a new user that asked the question. And that changes the tone of the question because new users don't always know what the system is about, what it's for, how it works. And then sometimes they need help. So when you see Babak has reputation of three, my reaction is, okay, I, I need to maybe help Babak understand our system, you know, by editing his question or how they're improving it or just giving him some tips in the comments, things like that. And you can see that the other people that are answering are quite experienced users. They have a number of gold badges, quite a bit of a reputation scores, like 30,000, 15,000. So it really helps you evaluate the information that you've been given. Doesn't make it right or wrong. I mean, you can have 100,000 reputation and be completely and utterly wrong, but it lets you know that these are experienced users of our software. So in theory, at least, they do know what they're doing. So all these systems combined together, and the net goal is when you click through on a search result, if you click through on this page, all the good information is at the top, and it's been vetted and edited by the community to be the best, one of the best possible answers to this question that we could collaboratively come up with. So everyone on the internet benefits from these little contributed slices of effort. So understanding people's motivations, and by people I mean programmers. So the computer, is really kind of fun to work with because it does exactly what you tell it to do. I mean, that's a downside too. It does exactly what you tell it to do. Whereas people are very confusing in, in comparison. I mean, their motivations are confusing. They don't always know what they want. They're complicated, right? But the, the thing that we have in common as programmers, the thing that makes us a community is that we love code. We love this thing that we're doing together. We have a shared passion for writing code and building software. And we also have a common enemy. This is important. Our common enemy is bad code, not bad programmers, because one of the things we try to teach people is there really isn't such a thing as a bad programmer. Uh, there's really just programmers who haven't been educated about bad code. And that's really important because every experienced programmer knows that eventually you're going to have to deal with somebody who wrote bad code. So any small thing you can do to create less bad code in the world, I mean, that, that's improving our profession in a very material way. You're making sure that the next guy or gal that comes along 
doesn't have to deal with horrible code from this programmer because they learned that, oh, this is a bad idea. I should probably do it this other way. Now, the trick here is this is an economy of information. This is not really an economy of, of friendship. This is an economy of information. So what this does is it gets rid of all the political stuff of like, do we have to agree? No, we don't have to agree. Do we have to like each other? We don't even have to actually like each other. Uh, but we have a shared passion, writing code, and we have a shared enemy. And this is what brings us together. And we're here to learn from each other. So the system isn't about entertainment, but I'm gonna come back to that. It's mostly about learning how to get better at your job. And that has obvious benefits. I mean, anybody who can think it through thinks, okay, the better at my job I am, you know, the more money I can make, the more prestige I have in the industry. The, I mean, it just feels good to create things that work well, you know, and I think everybody respects that and understands that. Now, I mentioned that the cur currency of Stack Overflow is information. Now, one of the reasons we don't do a lot of social features on Stack Overflow, there's no friends list, there's no, you know, you know follow this person, e even in the Twitter sense, which is very simplified. Because what I found is that people are very good at establishing social relationships on top of whatever system you put in place. And since the economy is information, that's what programmers respect. When they see, oh, this guy really knows what he's talking about, he's more likely to befriend that person in, in real life, I think. And I, I get a little disturbed when I feel like software has to tell me who my friends are. You know, like I don't know. Oh, that's right, Joe's my friend because he's in my friends list. You, you know who your friends are. That's not really the, the software's job, and I think you can save a lot of time by not even pretending to do that and just concentrating on the information, which is the real commodity in the system. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Clay Shirky, who I have a huge man crush on, frankly, and I was lucky enough to present with Clay at EclipseCon. This is his latest book, which I unequivocally recommend to everybody in the room. You should read it. If you do anything with, with online community at all, you need to read this book. And he uh, lately has this concept of big W work versus little w work. And this really cuts to the heart of what Stack Overflow is. Stack Overflow is little w work. So work is, you get paid to do big w work. It's stuff that you have to do to pay the mortgage, you know, to feed your babies, stuff that you have to do. Little w work, is stuff you do because you want to do it, because it's fun, because it's interesting, and because you're fascinated by it. So this is a real question that got posted on, uh, I think Stack Overflow and migrated to Meta, which is our discussion site for Stack Overflow. And the title is, why do I get more satisfaction out of participating in Stack Overflow than my job? And this isn't actually as surprising as it sounds. One of the reasons that Stack Overflow has done so well is because we make it really fun to interact with the community and show off what you know and answer these questions. And even just getting an answer to your question is kind of enjoyable in a way that sometimes your job isn't. But why is this? One of the things that Clay Shirky told us in his recent article was that you have to be careful when you're measuring usability. If you're measuring usability, a task can be very, very usable, but that doesn't mean that people want to do it. So you're measuring really different things. It's not, can you finish this task that we put before you, that, you know, 100% completion, perfect usability, but is this something people would even want to do in the first place? If you didn't make them, you know, put it in front of them and say, hey, this is a usability test, would they even do it? I mean, it's almost irrelevant at that point. So on Stack Overflow, we have a number of systems in place to encourage people to build up reputation. And as you can see here, this is the list of a, sort of abilities that you unlock as you gain reputation in the system. And the only way to get reputation in Stack Overflow is when another programmer vouches for you by upvoting you. That's the only way. It is never given, reputation is never given away. We don't arbitrarily make gifts of reputation. It's always one programmer vouching for another programmer. And if enough of these vouching votes are cast, eventually you become a de facto moderator of the system. You can see here at the bottom of the list, at 10,000, you can actually start deleting stuff from the system, which is, we view that as the most dangerous thing that people can do. It's still a vote-based system, don't get me wrong. Everything that we do is primarily vote-based. Uh, 
but the ability to vote to delete is very, quite serious. We also have a series of badges. Uh, in addition to the reputation system, the badges are ways of rewarding people for doing things in Stack Overflow that we want to encourage. Let me just take the top one off the list. So autobiographer, this is a very simple badge you get for just filling out your profile. Because it's helpful for people to know who you are and who they're talking to. So if, if I'm curious about an answer you've given on Stack Overflow, I'll click through to your profile and I'll say, oh, I see you're in France. I see you're you know, 30 years old. You have a lot of experience. You can put as many links as you like, all the questions, all the answers. This is very helpful information to have. So this isn't like a for fun, entirely for fun thing. This actually helps people evaluate the quality of your answers. It gives them context for your answers. And that's why we encourage it. And there's a whole series of badges based on this, as you can see here. And if you go to stackoverflow.com slash badges, you can see how they all work. But they explore different aspects of the system that the reputation system doesn't really capture. The reputation system doesn't capture, did you fill out your profile at all? But the badge system does. So they, they really work together. The other reason that we think Stack Overflow works so well is because we concentrate on taking very tiny slices of activity and making useful work out of those very, very tiny slices of action. So I think the example that I use is it's akin to walking down the street and you see a piece of trash. Well, you could do nothing. I mean, that's, that's fine. Or you could pick up the trash and throw it in the trash can. Now, this is a very tiny unit of work, but it improves the entire site in a very small way. So if you have enough people, hundreds, thousands, millions of people picking up trash in your system in a very simple way, all of a sudden you have a really strong, clean community. And we really encourage this. And our responsibility is to make it easy for you to do that and make it something that you potentially would want to do that's not a burden, which brings in the, the fun aspect of it. So another of Clay Shirky's points that he makes is if you look at Wikipedia in terms of the actual product, the thing that has been created, he estimates it would be 100 million hours of human thought has gone into building Wikipedia. But it was amortized across the entire human race, or at least the entire, for English speaking, the entire English speaking human race. And that's very much our philosophy on Stack Overflow. Rather than having one or two you know, system-wide level moderators, we would rather have lots and lots of community moderators, a lot of users who have enough reputation to do things that help moderate the system in very, very small but positive ways. So getting down to specifics of how we do this, number one, we're fast. We place a huge priority on being as fast as we possibly can be. Now there's limits to that, and we're not always as good as we'd like to be, but we believe it's pretty fast. Uh, and I was talking to Mike of Newsvine, and he brought up an interesting example of something they do on Newsvine. When they have users that are abusing the system, what they'll do is put a flag on their account that slows down the site for them. And by virtue of the site slowing down for these users, they stop visiting. And I was like, wow, that's fascinating, Mike. I was like, we've, we've thought about things similar to that, but the, the opposite of that is interesting too. The faster you make your system, the more participation you're actually gonna get because it's so frictionless. So the converse of that is really fascinating and we really try to exploit that on Stack Overflow. We try to be super lightweight, super fast, because when I get Stack Overflow in, in my search results, even if it doesn't have the right answer, I will know immediately if it's not the right answer. I don't have to wait for ads to load. I don't have to wait for you know, 10,000 crazy blog widgets to load to figure out if this is even good information. So I'm way more willing to click on a Stack Overflow link than some other site of unknown provenance, because it'll be fast. That in itself is, in fact, a virtue. We also don't require any kind of registration at all. You can go on Stack Overflow right now and just start typing and click Submit. Now, you might get moderated or flagged. Uh, but the point is to have only a minimal barrier to participation, because a lot of the people, a lot of the working programmers that have the best information are very busy people. Part of the reason they don't have a blog or they don't you know, write a lot of stuff online and share is because they're super busy. Uh, but they might be the world expert on this tiny thing that you're trying to do. So if they happen upon that and they go, wow, I know all about this, and they see this little input box saying, look, please participate. 
It's right here. All you gotta do is type this in, type in a name, an email, and that's it, and click submit. The, the bar to participation is very, very low for that reason. And I learned that from Coding Horror, from my blog, because that's how blog comments traditionally have worked. And it was always amazing to me that I would write a blog entry in 2005 about some random topic, and four years later, somebody would find it, and they would know exactly the thing that I was trying to figure out or some really fascinating insight into this problem or issue that I was discussing. And they shared it. And I just couldn't see us blocking out those people who have the good information in the name of registration or you know, enforcing the system and things like that. It seems very destructive. We also use a very simple formatting engine called Markdown, which I've been extremely happy with. Um, it makes it easy for people to use sort of a very basic kind of HTML. And I've always been surprised, I'll go to forums and there'll be a list, and instead of a nice HTML bulleted list, it's just, you know, a dash. And by virtue of the fact that our posts look better than other forum posts, because our formatting is so easy and so frictionless, even if it's the same information, it tends to look better on Stack Overflow. And that becomes something that people see and relate to and visit more often because of, like, oh, wow, this is formatted really cleanly. This uses standard HTML. It's not just a bunch of ASCII spew. Of like, here's my code, and it's just code and text, and it's just hard to tell what's going on. So formatting is important. Looks matter. Not, not a big surprise. Also, this concept of you can edit anything in the system that I mentioned at the top. We really believe that once the system trusts you, we, we trust you. I mean, we completely trust you. You can edit anybody's post to say anything you want. And the idea that you actually trust your users is kind of revolutionary. You know, it's like, wow, you actually trust your users not to go through and replace all your posts with poop, you know? It actually does, I mean, occasionally that happens, but turning that off because of the one bad apple hurts the community much more than just allowing it. Now, one downside of making it very easy to edit is that sometimes people go a little crazy with the editing. I mean, you do have some edit wars. You know, here you can see people can't decide, should we call them noobs? Should we call them beginners? Should we call them new visitors? Um, so you're also opening the door to, you know, disagreement about what things should be said on the site. But I think that's okay. So the final thing, the thing I would like to leave you with is two famous quotes. And if you read these, you can probably tell what they're about. But these are things that are going to be around long after I'm dead. <laughs> um, and they were built through tiny units of work contributed by people who are very passionate about those things. And that really is the power of the internet, is that it lets us take these small units of work that would otherwise be lost or not even usable and turn them into things that actually change the way we work, at least in, the, in, the, in technology. And in the case of Wikipedia, which is what the second quote is, I mean, it's kind of changing the way knowledge is disseminated in the world. And we're all collaboratively doing that. And we're doing it because of love, you know, because we love these topics and because we love sharing this information with our peers. And that's a lot more palatable as a programmer. It's very difficult to love your brother. I mean, there's whole religions about this, right? Learning to love other people. It's much, much easier to love the thing that you're creating together, that you believe in. And that's what Stack Overflow is about. Building something we, we love together using these tiny units of work. Thank you.